Hey there and welcome back. So today's lesson is going to be about horizontal, vertical, and diagonal alignment. I think these techniques are sometimes for beginning artists or artists with a little bit less experience in drawing. Um, they can be really difficult to visualize. So what we're going to be doing today and in these lessons is to make realized and illustrate what goes on in the artist's mind when we help to align up a difficult passage in drawing, still lives, the figure will look at those, and when we use horizontal alignment lines, straight horizontal lines, right, straight vertical lines, and then all kinds of major tilts to diagonal lines, both in terms of using again for the figure and also for the still life. So these are the subtle techniques of observation and perception to really lock in uh, scale and proportion and angles and relate objects to one another and also detail within an object to other areas of detail within an other, other object too as well. So we're really making uh, the drawing come alive and making our vision come alive through these techniques. It's like projecting graph lines or radar lines uh, in your vision or your screen of vision and being able to see that all the time and how these objects relate to one another. Okay, so stay tuned. I'll be right back and we'll get started. See ya. Alright, so let's jump into this meaty topic of horizontal, vertical, and diagonal alignment. So for materials I'm going to use for this discussion and lecture drawing is uh, color pencils. And I'm going to uh, change the color. So the blues will be for the horizontal, vertical, and diagonal lines, alignment lines, and the uh, brown and the black maybe just one or the other, I don't, I'm not sure yet, uh, will be for the actual drawing uh, of the objects. And I'll use my trusty triangle to draw with and also probably from time to time maybe an eraser and a, uh, a kneaded eraser too as well. Remember, you can use just about any, ma any material that you want. I will say this is that it, hopefully it's going to become apparent soon that when you do vertical, diagonal, horizontal alignment lines that drawing lightly really is the name of the game and sometimes a very soft uh, drawing utensil like uh, compressed charcoal or soft charcoal pencil uh, maybe even an ink pen at times can really get in the way so just be careful of that my goal is is to get to the point where you are so confident in drawing that you don't actually draw them out you just project them in your mind and that's that's really where we're headed so to get started what I've got in front of us is a little preparatory sketch I did we're gonna do the same thing in a little bit more detail and depth but I wanted to kind of show you as I was preparing for this lecture um, what horizontal vertical and alignment lines are in kind of their more abstract quality so I've, I've got a drawing here and we're gonna be doing the same drawing same composition and you can see a lot of these these uh, lighter blue vertical lines here. Some are diagonal, some are true horizontal uh, across. And that's what horizontal, vertical, and diagonal alignment lines are. They are ways to project space, measuring distance, and organizing the size and scale relationships from one part or one object to another object in drawing, but also the object to itself in composition, right? But also the object to the detail within itself. So all the subforms, like the eyes, the nose, the mouth, can be broken down in uh, horizontal, vertical, uh, and diagonal alignment lines can be used to help control their form. So not only is gesture and action, volume, contour line scaling, but now we have horizontal, vertical, and diagonal alignment lines to, to work with. So uh, what I'm going to do now is put a, uh, a piece of tracing paper over the, the composition. And I'm going to trace it down, or uh, tape it down a little bit. So we'll have it like a flap here. You could you could also make a JPEG of this or scan it in sometimes and, and do it do it digitally. But what what I wanted to show you, so you see it flaps over. The point of this is to show you what the artist sees 
in when we observe and perceive objects in space and to, to, to show you that this operation or this, this visualizing technique is a very two-dimensional approach, meaning that it is kind of like this little graph here, over here, that is very much either a vertical kind of look or a horizontal kind of measuring or even a diagonal kind of measuring. So, okay, what does that mean? Well, in relationship to our composition now, as I pop the image up uh, onto the screen, is that we want to be able to control the relationships of parts to themselves and onto also other objects. And so in order to do that, a lot of times we'll use, again, horizontal and vertical alignment. So if we come down here, you'll notice that the table is slightly diagonal. Well, the reason why I knew that is I placed a straight line, I drew a straight line like so over it. So you can see that show up and I could tell that it was slightly at a different angle. I knew to place the lettuce about right here by drawing a measuring line to balance that off of the compositional end, end border about right in through here. So I had that space and distance between there. So there was a vertical alignment line. Here was a horizontal alignment line. Where did I know to place the top of the headgear in my composition roughly with the, um, in, in, uh, while I was composing? So I drew a horizontal line across here. I drew a horizontal line across there to help me measure. Then there was another one underneath the chin um, to measure. And there was another one here in terms of the thickness there. So we're already starting to use our way to align and to give some measurement. So what about the thickness of the entire object? Well, that was used here and that was used here, right? to show that, to try to get, get that ordered measure thickness. And then diagonal lines started to emerge when we noticed that the actual head is looking this way. Okay, do you see that? So it's looking this way. So it's not uh, truly, the, 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 the center of the head is not truly straight, straight down. So if I draw a nice measuring line, vertical, we also know that the true center is got a little bit of a curve to it right in through there. So that that is an alignment line where we can see the rigidity of a straight line and then automatically adjust and correct for what we're truly seeing. So what this is, horizontal, vertical, diagonal alignment is a way to see that most objects don't fit neatly into these kind of graph-like patterns that we project over our drawing. And so it's like you're projecting uh, robotic radar lines out onto your model in a kind of 2D way. So I could draw horizontal lines across, and it's kind of a graph system in that way, in that, in that sense that you're projecting. And then you find where objects fall off of that perfect alignment. And they do most of the time, and that's why that's important. For instance, look at the angle between this lower part and the upper part here, right, of this headdress. That's a diagonal. The alignment of the center of the eyes, that's on a diagonal. Set now, and this will be the same case for the nose, the orientation of the nose, the bottom lip here, or excuse me, the lip crease, and also the bottom of the lip through there, and then the chin, it's angled off now and through here. So that's all in alignment. What about the width of the neck? And again, we're gonna do this, we're gonna slow this down together. There's the width of the neck, okay? Now what about the, the angle of the table? So we saw that it's, it's off, it's not quite straight across and we know that I can project in my mind or I can draw on paper a nice horizontal alignment line. And we know that now the diagonal for that table was actually the actual part is right in through here. So we see this part that's a little bit different or uh, slightly askew from straight across. This is a powerful, again, visualizing technique to show that 
Um, and it, go, and it really goes really fast to show how you can measure and get balance and get order and get the differences of objects because they're quite different. For instance, the width of this pedestal out here is just a little bit shorter than the outside of the headdress here. Same thing over here. It almost aligns. It's pretty close. I could actually maybe bring this in even further, but it's really, really close. And that's how we tell. This can happen very, very quickly in a drawing very quickly. So that's why it's, it's important to slow this down and to show you what goes on in artist's mind. Again, take for instance this lettuce cabbage thing. How high is it in relationship to the, uh, the, the mannequin model, the plaster cast? Well, if you notice coming across, it's about, it bisects it, if you draw a line across, about underneath the chin part. And so if we draw a horizontal line across, we can tell. Okay. Now this technique also is in conjunction to siding. And I'm going to break up those lessons into two parts when we side. That's a little bit tougher to show on film because we need to all need to be seeing the same thing. And so sometimes we can't when we side. So I'll, I'll show that at a different time, show siding. But uh, again, going back to the, the uh, lettuce part underneath here, and then if we look at our image and we take a measure, we take the bottom, bring a line across, horizontal line across, we can see that it bisects here about underneath the pedestal, about right in through there. So, and we've got a little extra of that pedestal, so I'm showing through. So we're pretty much on. Same thing with the, this bottom pair, it bisects here. We'll use a vertical line to relate it to the lettuce here, another vertical line to relate it to the um, plaster cast in through here, and we notice that it bisects about right in through there. And so if we're incorrect, we would put the pair over here, we could tell by drawing and projecting our horizontal and vertical, vertical alignment lines, we'd be off, so we need to move it over. All right, so when we take off, the tracing paper, this is what we see. We see our drawing. Now I've got the same lines that I used to make this quick sketch here, but I wanted to show you what it looks like when it lays on a little bit stronger. So when we take it off, it looks a lot more abstract, right? It's a, it's a series of visual siding alignment techniques. So now you get a record of what my mind was doing when we were looking at, when I was looking at the drawing, looking at the, the setup, the images to draw. And this is how I was relating it. And then what we find when we lay back down, this is how I was visually organizing the composition. Of course, we now we have the projected image to, to measure it from, okay? So I think that's a good introduction to horizontal, vertical, and diagonal alignment. Opening up the mind of the artist. And what we mean by mind, we mean seeing. How to see. Okay? Seeing and how to. How to see. How do we see? And this is another technique to get you better prepared and get you to organize visual space in your mind, okay? It's something that can, it's, will slow you down a little bit because if you're, if you're decent at drawing now, which you may be, you're probably already doing this. And so this is one of those, I think, very subtle techniques that we, as professional artists and also as educators, it's our duty to open up and show our students what goes on inside the mind as best we can in terms of ordering. So this visual, vertical, horizontal, diagonal alignment technique, very important one. All right, so now what I wanna do is I wanna to jump to an image and we'll start over and we'll go, we'll go deeper than this and we'll make this image a little bit more specific and we'll spend a good long time uh, getting a nice, image using horizontal and vertical alignment. And by the way, probably every drawing I'll do uh, where we're observing through observation and perception, I'll use horizontal and vertical alignment. 
I just might not draw it out. Sometimes I might just a few little marks, but I'm always using it. That's something that's very important to know too is that as artists we're always using that. Even loose gestural painterly techniques that we're drawn under are still going to be using that Degas, the Impressionist, even Van Gogh. Um, any, anytime you're, you're looking at observation and perception, if the alignment lines aren't there, and most of the time they're not, why would we show it? Because it's just a structural thing. It's like a lattice, right? When you're building a building and then you don't, you don't leave the lattice up. The, 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 con, the construction around the Statue of Liberty or some beautiful other statue or building, right? You take it away. Well, this is our lattice work. This is our construction work. And so it's taken away. So my job is to show you how we got that. And so 99.9% .9 of the drawings that you'll see, you'll probably never see this. But that's what the artist is doing. So if the artist is accurate and you, and you think that the artist is excellent, we're talking about observation and perception, this is what's going on, 100%. So you have to, you have to be aware of that. And so now it's my job is to get you to understand this, this visualizing technique, make it manifest in the visual world, which is what we need, okay? So that you're familiar and comfortable with it and to show it on your drawing, which there's nothing wrong with that. And then later on, you'll be able to use it without having to draw every single line that you need. You'll just see it and you'll relate to it, correct your drawing and make it work for yourself. Okay, so that's enough of that. Now let's go into and let's make a drawing together. All right, let's move to that. Okay, let's get started. So I went ahead and took the liberty of sketching out my picture plane here. This is 11 inches by 14 inches. So 11 inches horizontal by 14 inches uh, vertical. So I'm not sure what that is in centimeters for you international folks, um, but I know you can adjust because it's pretty easy to um, change the measurements via uh, Google or anything else out there. So 11 inches by 14 inches. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to draw all of my horizontal, vertical, and diagonal lines in this peach color just to show you that was different from the one drawing I just showed you. So we'll do another one. And then I'll do all my object drawing in uh, my black uh, color pencil. So remember, this is a Progresso, which I love, and I've got it in since it's shorter. Uh, and been used. I've got it in a pencil holder and then I've got the peach color, Tuscan red I guess, uh, of the Faber-Castell color pencil too as well. So two different brands but they're, they're both great to work with. Okay so let's get started. So the first thing we want to look at is start to place our objects in the composition and I might suggest starting with uh, the table. And the table, if you'll notice, is not necessarily straight across. It's at a certain little bit of an off alignment. How do I know? Well, I've already projected horizontal line across it. So the first thing I'm going to project is actually where I think it falls along my composition in my picture plane. So that's the first measuring I'm already doing with a horizontal line. So I feel like if halfway across is about right here and I'm not going to measure because I'm not going to we don't have to go that crazy with it. It's halfway across is here and halfway across horizontal is here you could do that okay that gives you kind of four sections then halfway across is about where the mouth crease is and through there so that brings that down to about where the table starts to emerge probably about right here, doesn't it? Feels pretty good. So that's the first horizontal line I might draw across. And I can use my straight edge just to show you the projections that we'll use. So there's my first horizontal line. Now remember, when you draw horizontal, vertical, and diagonal alignment lines, draw very lightly. The name of the game is to draw extremely light so that they don't get in the way later on of your true uh, the lines that you that you need for your objects. So as we start forward now, this angle of my table, I know that it's an angle because I can project a straight vertical line against it where I think it goes and disappears behind that cabbage, which is about right there. So there's a vertical line already that I can use right there. So I think it ends about right there, and then it, you can see the diagonal that it makes right in through here. Okay, so my table then is slightly angled, and so it comes in at about this 
angle. So now I'm going to start to sketch it in black so you'll see it here at a slight angle. Okay, so this takes demonstrating takes a lot longer because I'm slowing down the process of what I'm visually seeing and understanding so that you can have and, and we can open up our minds to uh, our students and other artists. And then, well, of course, we'll come over here and we'll catch the angle of the table right in through there. So now we have our table laid in, and it's slightly angled. If you look at it close enough, it's slightly going back in space. So that's important to get in through there. Now, one thing I could do already if I want to, I could lay in that little pair that's just slightly cropped off and emerging down through here. So I could, I could come over with this uh, border of my picture plane here and say, okay, it feels, this distance feels dis like a good distance here. And I could draw a ver vertical line up because I'll use that to measure that against the cabbage later. So I've got that to that, right? Make it a little stronger with my pencil and through there. So we see that. And then I can start to feel the distance. It's almost equal distance, isn't it, from the end of the table, right? And the same kind of space right in through there, which gets us to about right, oh, about right in through there. Not quite halfway across, just slightly in. So I'll push that over just a little bit. And I will feel our pair across here, right? So we've got that <clears throat> device. I'm going to push this over just a little bit. Always on the correct correction if you need correcting. So here is our pair now. Jump all pair in through here. So it's just an arc, essentially. Of course, it's a ball or a spherical form, actually. It's not a perfect sphere, and it probably turned into like a, a cone type form as well. All right, so we have that. And I'll put just a little bit of shading around so you see it. Okay, so I've laid in that pair already. Now I can adjust that later on if I need to. And so since I have it, now I'm going to adjust my horizontal lines as I move to cross. And I'll draw, I mean my vertical line says I'll, I'll draw a vertical line up here. And I'll draw a vertical line up here for measuring too as well. And so when I'm drawing these lines, I'm using this when I project in my mind. When I look at the still life objects in the image that we have, I can start to say, okay, where does this cabbage bisect against these horizontal lines that I drew up for measuring Okay, for accuracy uh, with the pair and also with the table. So the next thing we can do is say, all right, so the, the cabbage starts about right here, okay, and it overlaps a, the table, right, and it comes further out than the end of the pair. The end of the pair is here, right, and so we can move way on out, okay. It overlaps that table about right in through here. Okay, I'll draw it lightly. If we need to correct, we'll correct. But we know that the width of the pair against the cabbage, they're almost equal, but not quite. Okay, because I've got a horizontal, a vertical line against that pair coming up, and it's, so the cabbage is pushed in, and it's probably about right in through there. So that I know where that's where I'll go with my width. So it starts to turn. Yeah, sure enough, right in through here, and it starts to come over, gets thick. And that's where it ends, and then it comes back over in through this area, and down through it, and it starts to make its turn in through here. So we've got the general lay-in of our cabbage form right in through there. Okay. Now this cabbage form, we know that this is a curved angle. It's pretty extreme, right? It's like on a diagonal. Well, I'll show you. So we have a curve. You could even also project in your mind with a diagonal line where it ends here at the top. It emerges down below and makes that crease with a projection in your mind. And I'm going to show you what I'm projecting. So again, what I'm doing is opening up my visual measuring horizontal, vertical, and diagonal, in this case, line techniques to, sh to let you in and show you you know what I'm getting and what I'm what I'm measuring, and how I get what I what I do. And if I and if I uh, make mistakes, I correct. Don't be satisfied with with a big error, change error. Sometimes minor errors 
Um, and I'll tell you when they're minor, pff, no big deal. Don't worry about it. But if it's a major error, we'll change it. So this is where that ends over through here. But then, of course, we see the difference of the curvature right in through here coming over, coming through, and down. And so that gets us that nice, that nice crease of our lettuce patch. Same thing coming over and through here. We can say, okay, here's the point here. Here is my diagonal line here where I want my crease opening of the, the, uh, the patchier parts of the lettuce or the, or the folds, I suppose, right? Through here, comes on down and over and then through here, okay? And through, touches the table down through here. I'll make a mark a little stronger where it touches, right in through there. <clears throat> and then just getting this generalized feeling of this lettuce wrap, right in through there and up and over. All right. Coming down. Okay, so we're on our way, doing pretty good there. And then later on we can get into more detail. Okay, so now we've got the lay in, and that's a, that's a good point. We're laying in our composition and we're using our visual techniques and this we're keeping the drawing very general okay this is it could be this technique can be also for for spe specifics too and i can show you that uh, when we get into other objects and other detail parts of those objects object to object detail within the object can be controlled so the next signing line or the next uh, line I want to draw and show you is the top of the cabbage form and we'll bring it horizontally all the way across to help for measuring. And we know looking at the image that we're working with that we're, we're confident that it, it, the cabbage is not halfway up the composition. Here's about halfway, so we're good to go. And remember the mouth opening or the crease of the mouth is probably close to halfway. And I feel like it's going to be about right here. So I think we're in good relationship already with our lines. And you can see how organized and we can start to see again the opening of the mind to show you what's going on uh, with the artist. This might be a little bit narrow, but it's not a minor thing, or that's not a major thing, excuse me, uh, with the end of the composition in terms of here. It might be just a little bit wider, but it's not a big deal for me right now at all actually. All right, so now what I can do, since I've already got a couple of objects, and again, remember we started with the table, which by the way, holds everything together. I could have started with the head, but I started with the table because it holds all our compositional objects uh, together, right? It glues them because they're all sitting down on that object, which is important. So the next thing I want to get across now is the width and height of the plaster cast. That will be next. So I think what can help where does, this, where does this cabbage bisect our plaster cast coming across? About underneath the chin, right? You see that? Right in through here. So that's going to help. So I know that chin is probably going to be right in through here. And it's a pretty kind of a narrowed cut off head. It's not like a, a full head. It's almost just like a face. So I'm feeling that curve. That curve will feel like it's over and through and coming through this, this way. And I should draw it in black, right? Okay, there we go check myself. So you can see the object in black and the sight lines, horizontal, vertical, diagonal alignment lines, and more of a peachy, peachy kind of tone. So that's, that's the, the feeling I'm starting to get already within that, that part of the composition. So now I want to get the width of what we're looking at here in terms of the, the objects yeah, with the pedestal, right? And <clears throat> Let's bring over the bottom horizontal line of the cabbage, which I look at, and you'll project. And you can continue to project these. You'll, when you, you don't draw them anymore, when you're confident, you'll project and you'll project. And of course, it doesn't show up. So I'm projecting now this across, and I know that the pedestal is going to be breaking that a little bit, right? Just slightly. It curves downward underneath, maybe to about right in through here. Uh, here all up, almost and almost aligns and goes a little bit lower than the pair just slightly so I can draw a horizontal line across there too as well so it's probably about in through here where the pedestal the bottom curve truly happens okay 
So there's a little space between the cabbage ending and where the pedestal ending is. So it's about this much right in through here. And it almost kind of aligns up with the end of the pear. Not quite. Right in through. I feel like it's right in through here. Okay, it feels pretty good. Maybe aligned pretty nicely. And so I can draw this line all the way, all the way up. The pedestal starts to look like it aligns with the thickness of the head wrap right in through here, like it's ultimate thickness almost. Maybe it breaks it just a little bit because it bisects within the cabbage. So that head head wrap probably bisects the cabbage about right here. So I'm going to mark a little alignment line vertical right in through there. Okay, and so we're starting to establish where this object is in our composition. And again, this happens lightning fast. I can start to sketch this out without this. It just happens fast. And you probably, you might even do that too already. But this is a basic technique that you would want to get in the minds of all artists who want to be competent and good and go on to do something powerful in drawing and also uh, painting or any, any discipline, sculpture, ceramics, film, whatever. Okay, so now the width of the pedestal, in it, which is the ultimate boundaries of our object, right? We want to start to set in and we'll put it over compositionally about, feels like it's about right in through here. And even this might be a little short. I could even open up the boundaries in my composition just a little bit. I don't care. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna pay more attention to the width of the pedestal more than I am where it 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 gets close to the end of the picture plane. So I'm gonna make it a little bit wider. It's probably right in through uh, here I feel like and I'll draw a vertical alignment line up all the way through here. Okay, because that, that really is also about the widest part of the entire image too as well. So we've already got some strong alignment lines I can tell to get this in. And so I'm going to start drawing the oval or the ellipse of our pedestal. Start to sketch it in see how that feels. And it ends about where the table ends. If we drew through the, through the plaster cast at the top this starts to feel like it ends right up and through in almost where the table table line is right in through here. Now there's some thicknesses that we're going to be dealing with too as well. Okay, so we're coming through here and downward. And so that's the beginning ellipse. And so let's judge it. Looks pretty, looks like it's pretty good. Now I can already tell with my alignment this neck chin area is going to be, has going to have to be moved over in this direction the way it's aligning up, okay? So I can already, that's what this tool is, these kinds of visualizing techniques are so powerful. This is a major error that I want to correct. By the way, you know, students ask me, how do you draw that so quick? Or how do you, how do you get that so quickly? I was talking to one of our inst professors, instructors here, Taylor Woolwine, and we were both agreeing that it's not that we make, we don't make mistakes, because we do. We're just faster at seeing and correcting. And I think that's a, a powerful, was a powerful uh, comment that he made. And I, I think that's an accurate one too uh, as well. So uh, we know, I think I know now that the chin is going to be pushed over further in this direction. It's going to feel like it's coming over and through here. But I'm not ready to commit to it yet. Okay, I want to show you what I see when we draw the the other base of the pedestal coming down this way. So I've got the width of my lips and the pedestal here and here, but I'm also thinking about how far in where it touches the, the chin and the neck comes in about through here, okay, roughly. That's the narrowness of it. So you can see that it's much more narrow here than it is on the outside. That's something I look for. I also look for the other side, how it's thinner. It's a thinner kind of neck. How much spatial distance between the the um, hairline edge? Because here's the true total thickness of the head wrap at, at, out in through here. So where the pedestal ends and comes up, it almost bisects uh, truly with the thickness out through here. But if I bring this in further, right, curve over. Here's where the pedestal starts 
here where the neck is. And if you notice it, it's also, here's a diagonal alignment line right through here. You notice that it's on a little bit of an angle. So it's higher here than there. Okay, really important to see. So you, you can sketch this out with me or you can watch it. Hopefully you're sketching a little bit. I know it's going to be slow. It's meant to be slow, to slow it down. And then take the image, I'll put this image at the end of the, of the instructional video and then you can draw from it uh, as you want. And then truly is start to set up your own still lifes and draw from those directly from life. That's the point, is to get these videos under your belt, get some instruction, and then get on into your own investigation as well. All right, so take a look at that. So there's where our neck comes down. So we know that it's thinner than the pedestal. We just, we see it, and we can use our alignment lines here. So here's the curvature of the neck right in through here, right? And here's the pedestal coming down. We see that. We have that nice diagonal right in through there. And then we can start to fall into our patterns of breaking this pedestal down a little further right in through here. Okay. Curvature there. And then it starts to get thicker in through here. Now this thickness, you can tell that there's a little angle of the table right in through here. So this thickness ends in here. Starts here straight and then it starts to arch over like so. Okay, curve over. Gets wider as it curves on down. <clears throat> Comes around. We have that thickness there. Can, it makes a disc. Nice disc running through there. I like saying the word disc. Cool word, right? This curves over. We get that curvature there. Okay, and so now we can bring this down. It straightens out just a little bit. We see that kind of emerging sort of straight right in through there. Okay, now we can do this. We can see how, how well did we do against our cabbage. We can bring over the line where these two areas are and how much of the cabbage is showing through in a relation, the relationship of where the ellipse begins, the straight ends on the neck, and where the ellipse begins here and here against this. And how much of that, that cabbage is truly showing. It looks pretty accurate. Now we've still got a little hump that, that I can draw into here that makes this a little bit higher, but that's okay because I'm generalizing where that ends. Okay. So we have that. And I feel like already this needs to be a little bit wider. Can you see this? So what I'm doing, this is a good mistake to show. So take a look at where we end this ellipse here, this curvature, and judge it against how much distance we have out here. And I feel like we need to bring this pedestal over a little bit further. And, I'm putting, and the reason why, I'm putting a diagonal line in my mind on the image, and I'm measuring it. And take a look at that. It needs to go a little bit wider, doesn't it? It needs to probably go about right out to here. So I missed that a little bit, and I'm glad I missed it because I want you to see it. <clears throat> now, I can continue to sketch right on top of this. I don't even have to erase, okay? I think erasing is overrated. Sometimes I do it, a lot of times I don't. And the reason why is I want to show you mistakes. Don't worry about mistakes. Use them and enjoy them. I know that sounds strange, but what I mean by that is is that you learn from them and you draw lightly enough that the mistakes just go away. Um, and you draw over the mistakes and you put shadow and tone over them and they just don't show, show up. That's the, that's the key to it. All right, so we'll kind of abbreviate these little, all this detail in through here. Now, maybe I'm too wide here. Maybe that was the issue here. And I think maybe just slightly, if we project another diagonal here against here to the edge, to the tip where it's thick. And yeah, maybe I was. So maybe it should, it should have ended here. And that gives me a little bit closer to my border, my picture plane, which is right about there. So see how complex this siding gets? But this is your visual record your recording of how you're signing and measuring and aligning line, uh, uh, line. well, it's a line, but it's really a mental uh, approach to it. And what's nice about this is that when you draw this way for an exercise, it gives you your mental record. So it's, an, it's an, a two-dimensional approach 
a vectoring, if you will, or graphing, if you will, to manifest and make your, your images conform and control where you want them. So, to get back here, this goes in this way, the pedestal moves over, and that aligns much better. Okay? Normally, if I'm drawing by myself and I'm not talking, I just see that and I correct it really quickly. You know, probably already almost through with the drawing. Let's slow it down. That's the point of all this, right? Is to slow it down so you can see it. <clears throat> so right in here is my ending of my lips, okay? And then there's this, this kind of, it straightens up a little bit and then it turns, it's kind of in a diagonal. That's where the thickness is, it's turning. And it does this as it comes back in through here, okay? And it straightens up a little bit inward from here because I can project a line, I'm not gonna draw it. So it's already there and right in through here where it gets a little bit narrower. And then of course it curves on out and on over. This one comes in just a little bit too. And of course it's slightly higher since we're slightly on an angle. All right, so that feels more comfortable, I think, in our drawing. Now this is gonna curve over, right, and start to come over. Okay, let's see how we did here. We'll step back and take a look. And yeah, that feels, don't you think that feels more comfortable now? And when I mean by comfortable, I mean more accurate to uh, the composition through there. So sometimes you'll also you see me use a straight edge when I sketch. I love using it when there's a nice kind of man-made straight line uh, at times to, to, to make a nice kind of connection to that kind of quality. And so now let's get the thickness of the <clears throat> ellipse in, in, in a general way on the plaster cast. We won't go for all the detail for now. Okay, it would take too long, but you could. You could weigh all this thickness out and even project it over. So you can be, the more you use that, the more your imagination goes, the better. But sometimes you're, you, you just think you get the idea and you can start to use it. And uh, I'll let some of it go just for, to abbreviate the, the film that we're making. This Academy Award winning film and my Academy Award winning editing skills, right? I think not, but I think you, hopefully you're getting getting the ideas across here. So we'll put uh, this in through here and it gets a little bit kind of wrapped in. Let's get some shadow. Okay, I think that's good. Good for now. Okay, we'll start to put in cast okay, shadow here. And I don't want to get too detailed because I want to get this locked in for you. So now I'll come back and I'll organize this tabletop here, make it a little bit darker so we can see that. And then over here too as well. So you can see that just a little bit further. Okay, so now we're, I think we're cooking with gas to use an Australian phrase, right? So uh, we've got some of our objects located in, and now the next step is to get the, um, the finish of the head. And it feels like the head's gonna be a little too, maybe a little too short where the picture plane ends. I don't know, if not, I'll just adjust the picture plane and not worry about it. Make your mistakes and adjust like we did and you'll be you'll be happier. You'll don't worry about being perfect. Worry about not recognizing mistakes and that that will get you maybe closer to uh, a certain kind of perfection. So, I can look this is on a diagonal this cast shadow in through here, right? So I could have seen that as a diagonal line going in this direction, kind of bisects the cabbage here almost goes into the corner of the table, but not quite, just to show you that. Okay, make it even stronger there. So all, all forms in spaces and angles can be, can be utilized. All right, let's tackle this head a little bit further. Okay, so I'm gonna guesstimate, and I'm gonna gesture out again where we have the bottom of the head, the plaster cast, and we have what is a, a top of the head, which is the cloth thing. That's not the true complete top of a skull head because that would be the cranium which would I think be be up and through here. So I'm thinking about where the center of the head is with this line and then where the cloth angle is about here. I'm going to come down, right? So this is a diagonal line coming across because later on I can use that to maybe catch the cast shadow over here. So I'm going to actually make that a little stronger sight line so you can see it, or alignment line. I'll say, I'll interchange the both. They kind of, they kind of start to do the same thing a little bit. 
All right, so I'm coming down here to this pedestal. Okay, catch that, come back up <clears throat> and angle. And so I'm feeling, I'm measuring in my mind already the weight between, in the, the uh, proportion between this top of the head where this head rest, this head towel thing is, um, cloth, whatever. And through here, I'm going to sketch out just a little bit in through here. I want to make sure I have enough ink. Now, I know I'm, I'm too short if I wanted to include that antler in. I could bring up my picture plane. Maybe I'll just do that to show you. Let's see if it gets in the camera. It's going to be pretty tight right in through there, so I'll make it a little bit higher. So we'll, we can be a little bit more accurate. I really don't care about it, but I thought I'll, I'll just take this picture plane up just to show you that. You can do that too as well. And it's just about in, in, out in the camera view at the edge there. Okay, and of course you could take your eraser and we could race, it, race that line for now because it, it's not necessarily a horizontal alignment line. So take that off really quickly. Use your brush like so. And we're good to go. Let's see how we do there. So we can have a little bit more space, I think, to work with in through here. Because I'm not going to draw the antler, but I, I might draw the cast shadows. But I think it's, eh, it's important to know that I make mistakes and we can correct them. And we don't live and die by them. So the apex might be up and through here coming down. So here's kind of the, the center of the head right in through there. And I'm going to show you later on that this is on a curve too as well. And again, it might be even lower, so we'll see. And that's why we sketch out. All right, so now I'm coming down the side of the head. This is a pretty strong angle down, right? It ends, if here's the thickness out through here, we know that, can you tell that it slightly ends in a little bit? So I'm, I'm using a sight line, a diagonal line. I'll draw it right here, okay? To show that, I'm gonna come in through here. I'm gonna show this headdress in through here, okay? Right in through there a little bit, up and over. That's where that's going to going to fall. That's going to help me in through here, <clears throat> and I'm showing that this head head dub decoration right in through here. The thickness is about right in through here. Okay, here's its thickness coming up, and then it goes back in an angle this way, and then it ends probably about right in through there. Here's my thickness right in through there. Okay, <clears throat> coming down and over. Okay, right in through there. All right, so there's our angle coming up. And so this ends, it gets narrower because of that diagonal alignment line, and it ends, it curves, starts to curve about right there. Can you see that? So I'll make a mark there. So you can start to see that organi organization coming on in. Now I could bring a straight line in my mind over this way here, okay? There's a horizontal line, kind of where that curve starts, right through there. And I can say, how are we doing here in terms of the angle? This part, again, is higher than that. And I know that because I drew a horizontal line over in my drawing to measure that. I see, and so the curve of that here, and it might be, I might have this too wide. I can bring it in a little bit, right in through there. So I've got that. I've got this angle now coming over, so that gets me settled in through here. I can come over. I can start to get more settled in through there and start to feel that through. That's getting pretty accurate. If it's too high, I can start to start to bring it down. I'm more locked into here than I am here. So I'll start to feel this this chin, and again, this starts to overlap because our head is looking in this direction coming through. All right, so now we can take our chin. We can move this chin over, it overlaps and comes through, the head comes through here, the jaw now comes in through here, right, like so. Here's our true thickness over through here, and we bring it in, so that might be a little bit wide. I can narrow that just a little bit, right in through there, take that over, okay, right in through here. And I'm going to draw a vertical line up to help me with this alignment where the head cloth is, right in through there, the loin cloth, as it comes on down. And I can see this as an angle. I'll catch that. Down and through. 
and I'll start to see the thickness coming through the loincloth down over. So its thickness goes a little bit further past the edge of our pedestal down and through here, which is right there now. It's a little bit different. It almost ends the edge of my border. So now I'm going to make my border a little bit wider too as well so we can fit our composition in. So if I miss it a little bit, I'll just make it wider. Too as well. It's not a big deal. Unless it is. If it's a big deal, then it's a big deal for you. Then you can adjust. And I think it's less of a big deal, but I want to just see that I, I would adjust this way too as well. Okay, so I'll just lighten up this line with my kneaded eraser and take that out. And so now we've got the true thickness of this head decoration, which is going to be about right in through here, okay? A little bit further past the pedestal, about right in through there. Now, next thing I want to look for is where it ends. And I, the first thing I look to is over here where this head decoration that he's wearing, head covering, Okay, right in through here is at an angle. Watch this. So how much of it at an angle? We know it's not straight across. If we project a little straight line, we can say, okay, it comes across. It comes down below the bottom lip if we project it straight across here. So we start to then look at, okay, where's the truest angle? And it's right in through here. Now you could sketch it out or you could, you know, technically draw it out. I think. Both are valid, but I'd like to just show you technically. I would just normally sketch it in through there. And we feel that the ending of that headdress is about here, right? It ends slightly below the mouth crease and about where the end of the bottom lip is going to be right in through, looks like right in through here. Okay, so we can come across and catch, start to catch all this good stuff right in through, right in through here. That's where it folds in a little bit, then it starts to get a little shadowy. And I'll just start to put a little soft tonality right in through there so you can start to see it as we come in through here. Okay. So the problem is sometimes that when you look at finished drawings or paintings, you don't see the mechanics or the visualizing behind it. And again, that's our purpose is to show you um, what is behind the the aesthetic behind the finish behind the style and we get into the mechanics all right let's continue on so continuing on now we'll start to tackle uh, the, the facial features of the the uh, head and we'll also tackle the cast shadows in in through here I'll show you how to how I, I'll think through the composition and we'll see if my if the if the height of the head is a little too tall I, I still think it is but but um, but we'll see I think I need to bring it down a little bit lower probably to about right right in through there I bet it's gonna be just a little bit so I'm gonna I'm gonna start to play around with it a little bit right in through here coming down and over where that wrap is and through here a little bit i can kind of already tell and the reason why i just feel like this and the way that forehead distance is going to be in the center plane of the head um here and then also against the eye line is probably going to change it and make it just a perceptually a little bit a little bit lower Probably somewhere right in through there. Okay, so let's continue on and I'll show you what's going on in um, my vision, my head here. And ultimately we want to get to yours. So the next thing uh, I'll look at is I'm going to look at, kind of see where that cheek, this cheekbone kind of turns in through here, this jaw with that, um, with that turn of the shadow is in through here. That's a nice kind of side plane uh, of a head, uh, that jaw area. I'm going to bring that line up. And I'm also going to, I notice this angle to here as well. Gonna make, put that in. And this angle to here, uh, going back to the head, is kind of a diagonal line. I see that too as well. So I'm going to put that in my composition and start to show you that as I come forward. So I'm already, already starting to say that this head has got a side view. It's tilted. Grab a drink of coffee there. Got to have your coffee going. 
and that uh, we've got more of a side view and not just obviously straight on because he's looking again this way. So we've got the straight line in through here, but what we're really noticing is that the center of the head off of that straight line is slightly curved. So the nose line downward to the tip of the nose will probably be somewhere, I'm guessing right now, I'm just weighing in visually, maybe about right in through here, close. Coming through down and back over underneath into the chin, right in through uh, this area and through here. So you notice that coming on, coming on through. So we have that. So we have this nice curvature and we get that based off of this straight line. And then how far does that curve deviate? I'm thinking off that straight line when I start to draw and sketch. Again, it's really fast and it's really loose and I don't make my sketches this tight. Again, in this, this uh, so detailed with my alignment lines, but we've got, you know, we want to show you that. So keep that in mind if you're just tuning in and through here. And so there's where the arch of the head belongs right in through there. Okay, next thing we want to start to look at is where is the center of the eye line emerging from. So I'll start to think about here coming across and the center of the eyes, okay? When I'm talking about, I'll draw it over here, is that it's at an angle and it's where I think the center of the eyeball or the whole entire eye socket structure happens to work off of the center, in through the center, or how I see that center. And of course the nose would start to merge over in through here. So that true center, and I'm weighing that, weighing that distance between here curving across, and I think it's about right in through here. That's where I see that. Now it's on an angle, okay? So it's not straight. And again, how do I know that? Because I put a straight line against it. So if I think the center where this this right eye is, and I put a straight line across, that's not going to do me. And also the head is moving in this direction, so it's in more of a perspectival uh, composition. And so it's got to be tilted, so it's got to be moving. How much of a tilt I perceive it to be about right in through here. And so I can lock that in for you a little stronger by drawing a diagonal line that way. So I feel the center of the eyes in through here, come down the center axis of the head, looking for the bottom of the nose, and that's going to be on a tilt too. Straight is across here, here's the tilt about right in through there. So I can put that maybe a little bit lower, right in through that tilt, right in through there. So tilt of his nose, nose line in through here, and I'll bring that across strongly so we can see and feel all that. Mark that against here, it feels pretty pretty accurate in through here. And then the mouth crease of the two, uh, the two, the two lips, the mouth, the actual crease between the two where that shadow is, is certainly at a little bit of an angle here, right? We see that come across, okay? And where it's ending is, I'm going to perceive to be right now about right here. I'll put a dot there so you can show it. And of course, this one ends about right in through there on slight Okay, at an angle for now. Okay, we'll show that. And then the bottom lip, the crease there, the end of the bottom lip where that shadow is, right in through here, <clears throat> right in through this area. Okay, feel like we're right in through here, coming across, and then this distance I measure it looks pretty good too as well. And so I'll draw a straight line, excuse me, a diagonal line across for that measuring to see where we're at too. And we feel we're just slightly above the ending point of this headdress. So that was this head wrap. So that was pretty good, pretty good drawing right in there as it as it works together. So if it didn't, if this was a little higher, a little bit lower and I got this angle, it, it may or may not change it depending if it, it wasn't that important to me. So sometimes I, when I make mistakes, if it really is truly integral to the composition, I'll change it. If not, eh, no big deal, and I think most artists will will tell you will tell you that if it's important 
They'll change it. If not, they won't. Now, this comes in more of an angle now. I can see that. We, so we can start to move this chin in a little bit more, a little bit better. Okay, so we can have this relationship uh, too as well. So we start to get a little bit more confident with the structure uh, of our head as we move forward. All right, so we've got our features starting to emerge through our composition in through here. So I can start to draw this in a little bit where we have that coming up a little bit higher too in through here, that wrapping down and through. So it's actually a little bit thicker, I think I perceived it now. Got it how I want it into here and we'll come down. Okay. And work on down and through here. Get this headdress starting to come on through. Since we feel like it's pretty, pretty locked in. Width feels pretty good in through here. The ending point of the head, the brow line will be about right in through here. The brow turns in through here. So something else we can look at. If I feel like the brow as it comes through, it down is going to be about right in through here. And over. And we're above the center of the eyes slightly, by the way. Okay? Or the uh, the the top of the eye. That brow I can start to feel across with another diagonal line. Alignment line over and through here. So that's going to feel like it's going to come this way, right? And then you notice that as I draw that, and then there's a deviation up through the eyebrow in through here to give him that expression that we want right in through this area and through here. And of course, coming on down, on down the line right in through there as well. So that we can start to see how this is starting to emerge, you know, uh, cleaner and clearer for us uh, within the composition. And that's all because of drawing perception and of course now we're using alignment too uh, as well. Alright, so I'm going to come down and start to feel this this jawline in through here. I want to show you this as I come down and start to get this. I feel like the major curve happens before the ending tip of the nose which is pushed about right over maybe a little bit further since it's wider about right in through here. And so the major curve happens, width happens here, and, it's, and it curves in and gets a little straighter and curves back, starting to back out slightly below that nose. And I'm just projecting lines across that. So we come in a little bit here, we come over, and then we see this curve. We can start to feel that chin curve through the thickness, right, of that chin curve. And through here a little bit more. <clears throat> can start to push that back in a little bit of time. We start to feel that. And then now we can come across the ending point. Here I can bring a diagonal line over for alignment. So the ending point of this jawbone curve I can bring over. And we'll feel it over here. So that was a pretty good analysis already in through here. Right in through here. Here, right? This line. This line in through here up and over and through, we can cut in. And so this gives me a feeling of where we're at with our nose and our jaw and the shadow of all that system right in through there. We can start to come over and start to put in that shadow. And so what we're saying now, and what we're utilizing now, is we're saying that we are now relating object subforms within the object to itself to finish out the entire object. So object to object, right, but also object subforms within itself, I think is important too to understand what we're doing. We're starting to get into uh, now with this with this drawing. Okay, so we'll come over through here and I'll kind of go through some of this a little bit more quickly. <clears throat> I'm not going to make this super detailed or, or valued, finished in terms of, of you know, finished drawing. It's not the point. The point is to show you the alignment and you can get on with it. And through here and up and over and I'll put just a little shadow up in here for relationship. And I can bring this on down. Okay, so we're, I think we're controlling it now pretty good in our drawing as we move forward. Here. 
So let's start to work on these eyes a little bit further. So we've got the nose in through here, and I can start to project. Here's our center, right, coming in through here. And we can start to say the end of the nose, brow area at the top here, the top ending here. I'll put a line to measure across here. I feel like it's here. The width thickness about right in through here, right? And then the area where it turns in and gets darker about running through here. So these are projection lines, verticals that I can use. And I can throw down the figure here. I can throw down the cast here and throw down about right here and to take a look at. And so you notice that this really helps to tell us where the angle of the nose is in the situation. So the nose, the eyebrow comes over through here, the brow line, the hub and thickness of the brow comes over through here, right? And then we start to see where the thickness of the nose connection is over and through here. And its thickness is to here. Hubs all the way over and ends about right in through here where it comes over, right? We see that in through there. So there's our thickness right in through there. So that helped us out already. But then we see this straight line coming through. And we see that it almost winds up, but not quite to the to the right side of the tip of the ending part of the nose, right in through here, right? So what that means was, here we come down, we see a little bit of extra, take a look at the image, a little extra of the nostril over here, so that nostril is pushed over. So that means, again, that the angle of the nose, right, is here. That's what horizontal, vertical, in this case, diagonal alignment lines can give you. This is probably a little wide. Pull that in just a little bit, put a little extra softening shadow to pull that in just a little bit. That ends probably slightly in to the nostril just a little bit, probably right there. I'll show you what I'm looking at right in through there. So when I draw those lines again, I'm manifesting to you, rendering to you, illustrating to you, whatever word you want to use to show you what's in my mind. Again, that's pretty key. We don't always get that. We don't know the mind, the mindset of Velasquez, for instance, when he's using that great sort of prototypical impressionistic brushwork that he was doing in the Baroque. Um, yeah, it's amazing. We don't know what was in his mind and how he did that technique because we don't have a record of it. And so, it's highly fascinating if we did to see how he got what he did, but I digress. All right, so let's get back to the nose and through here. And so we have that angle over. Where does the tip of the nose end? Well, we could say, okay, we feel like if it's here, we can draw a alignment line here, or how I align in my mind. And it's about what? About the center of the eyeball, right in through there, this width between here and here. So we're pretty good there. So the tip of the nose can come out. Okay, and in through here, so we have its tip around. Okay, come in through here, <clears throat> and on down, and over to the nostril, in through here, and then we can start to come up and grab that nostril up and over on this side, and over and through. Put a little shadow there, and then we can catch, we see a little bit of nostril, and that's the line, right in through here where it touches. You can see that where it's just where I'm trying to get to, and over, and it catches just a little bit of that side, and this hub comes over, and it's got a little, he's got that bony indention some, some people get right in through there. And so that was the line again right in there, you see it, that I saw here, that ending point there that can bring up for the nose right in through to help me control that composition. And then we can start to build this down a little bit just to make it a little bit more clear for you. And through here, I have a cast shadow coming in through there. We can deal with that. <clears throat> okay. So now we'll take <clears throat> on the other side of the nose and we'll start to feel this thickness in through here, right? We come through, we'll get that nose 
in through here, this bridge of the nose coming in where it ends into the, the bony part of the cavity of the nose and gets into more cartilage running through here. Okay, and then we'll come across and around. <clears throat> Feel that through, okay. Tip of the nose, a little bit of extra into here. I don't want to get too bogged down with detail, but I do need to show you this coming through. And we've got shadow coming across too as well. Now the tip of the nostril, watch this. So we're in a little bit of perspective, so it might not quite line up, but if we draw the tip here and we say, how are we doing? A lot of times nostrils will, their ending points right in through here and that line just happened to end right here. A lot of times they'll line up with the start of the eye. And so I'll bring that over and we'll look at our image. And it's pretty close to where that nostril ends. We bring up our vertical alignment and where that shadow begins about right in through here. So that was a pretty good, pretty good assessment. Right in through here is where that eye begins, right? up and through there and tucked nicely under that very prototypical kind of furrowed male brow very strong strong brow and through there <clears throat> right so let's keep on trucking here so I'll uh, kind of darken in this nostril just a little you can see that Okay, so we bring this darkness down and through here so we can get finally get the center of the, the nose in the position of the nose and through here. Okay, and you can use this shape now. This is kind of almost comes down a little straight, arches over this cast shadow, form and cast shadow together coming through, right? And then we have this cast shadow, and notice again that's on an angle a little bit, so we have a, a diagonal line kind of coming down just a little bit follows kind of the, the linear pattern in through there you can even measure that against the shadows over here it feels pretty good in through here it relates together pretty nicely we come through through here <clears throat> then all this as we come across we'll get our cash this cash shadow and through here we can say how again another another chance for an alignment line vertical and we notice it's also a slight diagonal this way but where it ends we'll bring it up and it's not quite center of the eye do you see that so we can end that cast shadow those things happen really fast in drawing and so i'm showing again things that i'll just start sketching out and look and i can't i really can't emphasize enough how slow um, how, how much slower we are um, in in terms of this process slowing this down because what really happens is as we sketch it goes really really fast okay I think it's like if you play a musical instrument and you're learning a I play guitar and if you're if you're learning a composition and you've got very difficult fingering passages, it needs to be slowed down for you uh, at a exceedingly slow rate until you master those passages and you can speed it up until it's meant to be played at the speed that it was composed and recorded at. And then you have it. Same thing here. We've got to slow this down a little bit so you can start to see that. So I've got that cast shadow in through here and form shadow that we'll put on just a little bit in through there so shadows can be can be fit nice and, and neatly and can form into horizontal vertical and diagonal alignment so the, the understanding of if you do play a musical instrument uh, it can be slowed down for you or an athletic technique too i think is a good uh anal analog to or analysis therein of uh of what we're kind of slowing down to do. Okay, so we've got that. So we can feel the end of the shadow roughly about right in through here where it straightens out a little bit. And again, it's not quite center of the eye. So let's tackle that eye uh, a little bit more. And I'm gonna start to adjust related to what I see in through here. 
base to the forehand, so we're pretty good through there. So we're always in a state of, you're always in a state of constant adjustment too, as well. I think that's important to keep in mind that you're, if you're drawing, you're doing well, and you're, you're analyzing what you do, you're in a constant state of adjustment. Am I, am I, do I have the right proportion scale here? Where am I off here, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I think that um, is pretty important to see. So go back and catch, catch our table a little bit right in there. Here, so you see that? Let's tackle the eye. <clears throat> so now we have the ending part of our eye roughly right in through here with the nostril. We can say about right there, okay, width of our eye. I can kind of make a mark. I can feel it coming down the center of our eye. And it ends where the, the true folding of the skin, the eyelash comes in, ends in a point, maybe about right in through here. We have some little bit of extra shadow. So about right in through there, it's a little bit long, um, which is fine. And so we can feel this whole eye cavity, this whole formation of the eye in through here in its curvature. You can even draw a line down where the shadow ends across diagonally to help you line these two together about here to here. And that will help bring this, this length over to that too as well, where the total ending of the fold is as well. So it's really powerful. Again, powerful, powerful technique that we use at the speed of light and that we can slow down for for you guys out there, our viewers and our students in NKU and also YouTube land. Enjoying making videos for, for my students here on campus and also alumni and high school students I get messages from now and also from uh, international students. I love that. So uh, if you have an idea for a video, you're watching this when you have an idea, you want to see something, if I can get to it, it may take me a little while, I'll be happy to, to do it for you for this public service that I'm doing. Okay, so let's get into this. Let's get into this eye a little bit and through here. So we have this rounded quality in through here coming over. We have the fold of the eyelid, uh, eyelid lids together coming over. So I'm going to simplify this out, moving over, falling down and through and over and in, curves in and downward and through here. And we'll finish off a little bit lower than center okay it's important to know all the way through and where this crease of the shadow happens in through here a little bit okay over there then we have that skin fold of the eye that shadow in the eye and through here then it gets pretty pretty hard edged in through here and up and over very formal kind of basic structural drawing that we're doing. It's not very, I wouldn't say it's expressive in that the sense of artistic looseness or expression, but it is structural and instructional. So we have that. Then we have this roundness, feeling the roundness of the eyeball through there, coming over where it, they come together a little bit, this eyelid folds over. We have shadow on the eyeball. Not the lid, but the eyeball. And then we have shadow under on the lid. And through here. So we know more how to place this eye because of horizontal and vertical and diagonal alignment lines that I've already put down to show you. So we can place it nice and comfortably in our composition, which certainly helps. So we come through here. And we'll close this, put this down more. Okay, and then we can start to put this in a little bit more shadow. And this whole thing, I'll start to put in shadow in through here that comes down about right in through there. Of course, we could bring a line over if we want. I'm not going to now. Speed it up a little bit for you. And I can start to throw this a little bit more shadow and tone. <clears throat> okay, so we've got that aligned decently well. We've got that sitting in. We found our center, right? We found it was on an angle, and now we're starting to find our thicknesses and finish out 
this part of the sketch a little bit. And I'll go ahead and find this crease a little bit for you. Just generalize it. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail running through. And it ends where that really dark crease is about running through here. Okay, and I think that's good enough for placement for now. We'll move on. So I'm going to get this jaw cheekbone in through here. Bring it down. We'll coarse shadow just a little bit. We'll get into true full value strength for a demonstration. Now this kind of, notice this kind of makes a triangle here to here to here. So I'm relating to that. Okay. That lets that diagonal relationships from here. All right, look at that, watch. This is how I'm seeing it from here downwards to here. It feels good. There's three diagonal alignment relationships running through there to make that work for me. And I'm gonna bring this jaw line, mouth muzzle line across. So as I bring this shadow down, here's something important. I bring it down and I'm gonna make a little darker mark about right through there. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop and relate it and say, okay, where am I to the eye? And I feel like it's pretty good alignment because it's a little pushed over from the darkest part of the shadow here. So I'll draw a alignment line to show you what I'm seeing about right in through there. That feels pretty good because the darkest part of this eye shadow, the shadow of the eye, not the mascara stuff, right, is about right in through here. It goes down a little bit further. So there's a bulky you know, quality to that, and it's over here, and it kind of gets a little bit pointy in through in through this way. Now this can be brought down. I'll, I'll tell you one thing that I see. This can kind of come over and through, and this can be brought down over this kind of headdress, and I'd bring it in through here a little bit, which would make this a little bit thinner. And see how I can just draw over that and sketch it's no big deal to make a mistake on that. So you can see that's a little bit, a little bit was less wide than I had it, which is fine. I can just adjust it or I could have left it. All right, so I feel coming back over here, I feel this is pretty good. Coming down and through to alignment, coming over and down on through. So all this feels pretty good in terms of, of what, uh, what we're looking at so far. And of course, I've got this cheek over and through here and chin now over in through here, it can start to form form this out. So this comes in about right here. We can say, okay, how far does this come over? About right in through there, and it the shadow kind of ends right in through here. How far does it end? We can put an alignment line here. I'm looking at it, and it ends about where this shadow begins of the eye. And that tends to line up pretty nicely right in through there. You can You can see that. So I feel like we're well on our way. We're, we're, um, we're doing pretty well here. And got this moving through. So now we can start to see this eye on the other side and how these measurements, we can see, just line up nicely. The top of the eye right in through here, the bottom of the eye right in through here, help us in perspective. Although this starts to get a little bit shorter because we're in perspective, but it gives us an idea. We always have to be careful not to get to, um, too complacent with sizing because it'll be a little bit smaller on this size because of, because of perspective. Just keep that, keep that in mind as we're, as we're sketching through. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so now we'll come over here and start to place our objects through. We see that the eye starts to get pushed and buried a little bit. The lash gets, the lid gets buried in through here. We have an angle. It's moving in this direction over and comes through this way. <clears throat> and then this brow tends to be really strong and come up and through and over this way. There's a little shadow underneath here. Like so, okay. So because it's on an angle, this eye is a little bit higher. This lid is a little bit higher than the other. And yep, with a straight line across, you can see that is just slightly higher. And that's a good thing, just a little bit from where the other one is. And so we'll come down. Here we have this information underneath, okay. We come down and start to get 
more of a kind of the rounded part of the eyeball itself and through here. This rounded quality which bulges underneath through there. And then we can come on in this way. So we can come down. <clears throat> this is a little bit in shadow, not make it too light and through here. Then we have a little bit of a bulge of the, the bottom lid. This under shadow in through here, it's very soft. Comes over a little bit. And then we have the ending part of this eyeball about right in through here. So I'll, show, I'll put a little, make it a little bit darker right in through here so you can, you can see that emerge through there and over. <laughs> okay, so what we want to do now is I think work with the mouth and get this mouth kind of set in and finished off a little bit so we can get this expedite this a little bit and then we'll handle the cast shadows a little bit and then we'll get out of here. So the we want to reevaluate what I've done here and make sure we're okay. So this distance between the bottom of the nose, we have the filter here, which is in line in the top of the lip. Top of the lip, I feel like it's now about right here in our drawing. So I could put in my mind a little horizontal diagonal actually line in through there. That was the top of the lip. The crease is lower. This feels pretty good still where I have it. Run through there. There was the crease. And then the bottom lip, as it curls around, curls around, and starts to end in shadow and gets completed, again, was pretty close to right in through there. So we're laying that on. We've got that. And then we, we need to take in effect this width. So let's go back and look at the width. Again, the width is too wide. Watch this. How do I know? Because if I bring the ending of the eyeball line down here, right, okay, the mouth crease comes over. The mouth crease is a little bit, just slightly wider than the nostril to about right there. So that mouth crease was too wide. So I can correct that now and go back and adjust uh, my composition. So here's the mouth crease. I'll put a dot there. And I feel like the other one was pretty accurate because it's almost right at the end of the edge of the of where the, the uh, mouth muzzle is. This comes over and then overlaps just a little bit. And this, of course, this softens up in the shadow and that becomes a cast, cast shadow in through here a little bit for now. And so we can move on. And so what we see here is <clears throat> the angle of the mouth, which I think is pretty accurate too as well. And so we, we can bring down a little bit of the filter and there's not a much lot to show there in light, but it's kind of a cavity, a curve in through here and maybe a little bit of a line through there just to show that, that uh, filtrum coming through and emerging a little bit just to give you a little bit of a sense of that form. And so after that we can start to feel this top lip a little bit above the crease of the mouth, just that curve, and then really the underneath shadow of the mouth is what we're looking for with that crease and it comes downward now, curls in downward like so, in in and over. So I could, when I put that point there, right, it gave me a place to shoot for with my alignment. So it's on an angle, right, it's on that diagonal, just slightly, and I know where the ending point is, and I can also know where my shadow is. Again, this happens so fast in regular sketching and drawing, but we're slowing this process down, you can see it. So I can bring the other lip over, which is going to be shortened in perspective and abbreviated through, and then we have the crease of the folds of, from the jaw coming over the mouth in this little indention about right here, a little dot I put right there where it increases a little, a little bit through there, okay? All right, so we'll continue on. And we'll just get this top, it's kind of like a scowl. We've got the top of this lip right in through here and it gets open just a little bit more down here. Right, right in through there. Which is really all of this is kind of a big sausagey shape of a lip. Right in through and over and down in through here. 
and through here and down and on in and over and on and through in through there so we can kind of come over <clears throat> we have our shadow here there we go and so we can start to see this underneath it's kind of a lighter area kind of a circular form now we can bring this over this needs to come in just a little bit and we're just about really there kind of have enough to make where you can get the idea and so the ending of the bottom lip where the shadow ends itself is about right see we're pretty good there in our alignment right in through there and we could put a little put a little extra shading in there if you can see that keep it loose if you want right in through here and we're on our way in through here and I'll make this little crease right in through here a little super extra dark where it folds underneath and on itself and it comes through down like so then we can fold over Okay, and we've got that. So we're pretty good already. And you can kind of see this, the lines start to even disappear some when we start to throw a little bit of, of shadow tone. Not completely, obviously, but we'd start to disappear a little bit. Okay, all right. So I feel like we've got the head region, I think, locked in uh, pretty nicely. This might even have gone a little, a little bit higher. Maybe I brought it down a little bit, but just maybe over a little bit. It's okay for a sketch. All right, I think we're doing okay. So in through here. All right, now let's take a look at the cast shadows of everything that we're, we're uh, relating in our composition, and we can start to <coughs> excuse me. We can start to finish this out. So let's do that. All right. So what I see when we're when we're working, I think first thing I think about is I'll project the angle of the top of the head, right, horizontally across from the, from the very top kind of tip where it touches that antler, which I'm leaving out, by the way, over and across here. That's the height. We know nothing of this cast shadow over here gets anywhere near touching and coming up over that. So, all right, the next thing I look at is this kind of angle and hub here where it really gets dark right in through here. Okay, and it turns right, right in through here where it turns. So I can draw a horizontal line there, across alignment line, in through there. And this cast shadow is still a little bit lower, right? So it's a little touch lower. Then I can think, okay, right above this brow, which I can make angled up just a little bit to get a little bit more accurate, right? Up in through here and over as it comes through right in through this area that's where I feel like as it comes feeling seeing right is this is where that cast shadow starts about right in through there so I'm gonna bring that over this line over but right in through here can you see it that's how I see it there's my horizontal alignment line for there and so what I'm seeing now, this is the height. Then I think, what's the spatial distance between the negative space, right, between the ending point of the uh, headdress and where the cast shadow begins, about right in through there. And so that shows me where I could start this angles over a little bit and then out the composition. So here's my cast shadow of this form from here right over to here. Okay, that's how it helped. I help govern that. If it's too high, if it bisects these lines, it's too high. Um, if it bisects this one, it's too high. If it goes underneath this line, it's too low as well. So I can feel this angle coming through. Where does this come through and meet the cabbage? It doesn't meet on the outside. If I kept going, it's here. So I could bring this maybe to here a little bit. And so, did you see how I lined that from here? over and not here so it's a little bit further in and so I could put my shadow line right in through there right so let's get the next major movement which is now this way right so is it moves here where does it bisect or where does it touch actually this this headdress well it's about right I feel like it's right here it's underneath the total bottom of the eye right here's the total bottom right in through here 
So it's a little bit lower, so it's about about right there. So here's an alignment line I can use right in through there to show that. Okay. And so this comes down at an angle. How much is it is it angle? Well, we can draw that, take a look at that. And later on, I'll show you in siding, you can put your pencil, hold your hand, your arm, your elbow, keep your elbow straight. So here's the angle of the outside of that bigger cast shadow, not the antler shadow, but the big one. And look how its angle goes above a little bit the cabbage head, right in through here. So that's the projection I see in my mind right there, right? And then I can draw it out right here. So we see that, see that coming across, right? So we see that to that. And then I'll pick up this shape, this cast shadow shape right in through here, okay? And then downward underneath, I can pick up the strongest, I'm picking up the strongest, strongest darkest shapes through there, I can start to see which is about right here, and they're kind of on the same angle. So where do they, where does it bisect the cabbage here when I draw it? Well, it's not halfway down. It feels pretty good about rear. It takes off the top kind of third, doesn't it? And it comes on down the composition, like so. So I'll darken it in now so you can see it. So hopefully you're understanding that we can see object to object shadows, uh, detail to detail on the object, uh, as well, which really helps. So in through here we can see, and then we've got, okay, where does this angle come down? It almost hits up to this angle, but of course this angle starts to get a little bit flatter because it's the end of the table. And of course you could keep going with your shadows and even your shadow, sh your, the interior parts of your shadow shapes. Let me go ahead and I'll just sketch this in, fill this in, mop this in with a little bit of tone, excuse me. <clears throat> So you can kind of see it a little bit, a little bit better in through here. And I think you're, we're getting to the point now where I think the point is, is pretty much well made. Uh, that horizontal alignment uh, can really help you structure and hold in your composition resolutely and cleanly and completely. And you can relate angle to angle, negative space to negative space form to form, here to here, and also subform to subform uh, as well. And really push the, uh, the clarity of your drawing uh, and get it more accurate more quickly, right? And move on. Now we weren't quick because we had to slow it all down. But if you take these ideas and then forget about me and draw your own stuff, and you can draw this faster. And, and what, we really, what we're really trying to say is all this information is now it's right it, it came from our brain right so it came from the brain and make sure I didn't write Brian brain and it's about seeing and you're using right your eyes and your brain and your vision and your perception to make this come alive and that's this is a record of all of our seeing in our visualizing Okay, so there you go. That's horizontal, vertical, and diagonal alignment to place our compositional objects more accurately and more confidently and get them right the first time and not make any major mistakes. You still make mistakes. You notice I did. You correct them. Adjust to them. And it's probably a good thing I showed you the mistakes so that way you can adjust to them and be free and confident that mistakes are, are part of human perception and that because of that, uh, we can adjust, learn to adjust and make art that is human and interesting and not hopefully uh, too robotic. Okay, so there you go. Hey, thanks for watching, watching and I'll see you next time. Take care, bye-bye.